Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in and subscribing. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, pass it on to your friends, whatever you wanna do. Uh, you're coming to the channel where I don't know what I'm doing yet, but I'm doing it anyway. So here we go. Uh, behind me sits one of my cars and we're gonna talk about it today. This is my 1965 Superformance GT40. Do a quick little walk around for you here. Look at that. So I ordered this car back in March of 2020, I believe. We just finished it up uh, about two months ago. I get asked the question a lot, is it a kit, is it a replica, is it an original, what is it? So this is considered, um, I guess kind of the blanket term for it would be continuation. And why I say that is, Superformance has been around for a long time. They actually build these cars in a factory in South Africa. And they're built using the original plans to build this car. Uh, they're built, they get, a, they get assigned a P chassis number in line with the originals. Uh, 85 to 90% of these cars are interchangeable with the originals. And it goes in the historic registry alongside the original cars. So very cool. I would consider it a, a, what's called a continuation because it's almost like they are taking the old GT40 and building it again. Look at this. Now, when you order one of these or buy one, uh, you actually can customize pretty much everything about the car. Paint color, which side you drive on, what motor you want put in it, all that stuff. So, very customizable, very cool. Um, I have somewhat pro-toured, I feel like, a little bit my GT40. Now, I do still have the original wheels so that I can swap them out and give it a very classic look. But one thing about this car in particular that I wanted was to be a little bit of a troll to Ferrari because you can't have a GT40 and not troll Ferrari just a little bit. Um, so this car is painted in Grigio Silverstone. Grigio Silverstone is a Ferrari color. It's the only one in existence painted in this color, which is kind of cool. Um, and as you can see, my license plate. There you go, bye Ferrari. Um, yeah, I just thought, first of all, the most difficult thing, if you've ever ordered a car or thinking about it, is deciding on color. Because some of the colors these days are absolutely incredible. I wanted it to be a little bit more sinister, and uh, it just turned out absolutely perfect, in my opinion. Um, let's talk about power plant for a sec. So one of the major decisions, the other major decisions when you um, order one of these is what are you going to put in it? And the GT40 ha is, is a little bit limited because of the amount of space in the back. But, here you can see. So, I've owned multiple GT40s. I've also ordered uh, or have owned some other Superformance cars. This one in particular, we decided to get a little rowdy. And uh, we'll open it up here. We'll put the clip in here so we don't lose it. This is just standard practice. Here we go. We decided to do something different. Now, this is only the third car to have gotten one of these motors. And the reason I'm leaving you in a little bit of suspense is because I want to show it to you while I talk about it. Look at that. This is a 5.2 Coyote Illuminator crate motor out of the GT350 Mustang, the modern one. It's uh, rated from the factory about 580 horsepower. We have not dynoed this car yet, so I'm not sure how much it's actually putting out. The car only weighs though, here's the kicker, 2,300 pounds. So, Imagine this much weight mid-engine, you got no nannies, you have no traction control, no ABS brakes, no power steering, you have all that power. So this car is definitely screaming at you that it just wants to do things that you don't want it to do and you just have to control it. You become the car when you drive this. Um, what we've also added back here, which is kind of cool, two things, one is this is a Borla eight stack. Now Borla, from my understanding, makes a classic version that's more classic looking, and then they make a more modern version, which is what I have on here, which I think looks super cool. Um, also added these carbon fiber uh, caps here, and these headers are custom made, uh, I guess exclusively through Downforce Motorsports, and what a work of art they are. Look at those things. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? And then, straight piped. Now, if you have seen me in person or seen this car in person or experienced it, it is insane sounding. When it's idling, it sounds like an alien spacecraft and when you're on it, it's just 
shooting out bald eagles out the backside with a streak of American flag falling behind you. That's the best way I could describe it. It is loud, it is obnoxious, but it sounds great at the same time. So the other thing I want to mention back here is this transmission is built by Mendiola. I think there's a couple of options when you order GT40. Now these are significantly backordered right now. There's some other solutions coming up, but I think the supply chain is finally catching up, which is awesome. So there you go. That's engine talk. I'm gonna put that down for now. So let's talk about, let's talk about the wheels real quick. Now these, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, these are not original size wheels. I do have my originals with the big tires, the 15 inch wheels. These are 18 inch, again, exclusive through downforce. I'm putting some new tires on it coming up because I just got back from a 2,606 mile road rally, crown rally, just took the stickers off as well. But what we did was we replicated the classic look of the GT40 wheel. Then it kind of keeps that same feel, but modernizes it quite a bit. By the way, I will tell you about Crown Rally. I'm gonna do a whole video reviewing Crown Rally and talking about my experience. But I spent seven days in this car, day after day after day, 2,600 miles in seven days is what I drove. Um, I'll get more into that later. So I have an intimate, relationship and experience driving this car and it's absolutely incredible and scary and fun and all of the emotions literally uh all the time so those guys in the 1960s that raced these were heroes in my opinion um by the way i did crown rally we finished the car on a friday saturday and sunday i put 400 miles on the car just to make sure we worked out all the kinks and then left and drove to chicago two days later and did the entire rally so and had no issues it was fantastic i'm going to move this out of the way here we don't want any of that this here that we're going to sit on to get in the car this is actually one of the two gas tanks you'll see there's one on either side and there's two gas caps so when you fill the car you actually open both of those up and uh there you go now if you're a big person i'm i'm 511 and i weigh about 210 pounds so i'm a i'm a decent sized guy and when they build these cars, when you order one, they're gonna fit the seat to you because look, if you look, there's literally no way to adjust this. It's just metal underneath. So what they do is they actually remove some of the padding out of here and you're gonna see why in a second. I'm gonna collapse this selfie stick here and jump into the car. I did not do that like I normally do because I'm trying to talk and film at the same time. But watch this, you're gonna come along for the ride. Let's see if I can get this on here for you. And you're spinning, I'm so sorry. There we go. Okay, look at this gap between my legs and the steering wheel. I mean, 2,600 miles driving like this. Isn't that crazy? And this is how I, oh, actually, I'll show you even better. Watch this. Gotta be careful not to get decapitated. So you can see my headroom. I've probably only got about an inch when I sit up straight. So generally I'm kind of driving a little bit more um, slouched in the seat. Super comfortable, by the way. Uh, doesn't look that way. These seats are super comfortable. Like I, I, I was very surprised I didn't have a ton of back issues after that, after that rally. Um, because of my ADD, I'm gonna jump around here. So these, this dash is, um, just like the originals, right? You got your speedometer on the right, you got your fuel tank, your volts, your oil, your water, your RPM gauge is right in front of you because, oh yeah, that's most important. Now this is more of the original gauge. My car actually revs to 8,500 RPM. So I'm thinking about swapping this out. Uh, so this red line is not applicable right now. Um, I think that's about it for the inside, except for, oh yeah, that, that, the view. So this thing, look at that, look at the linkages. Man, it is just awesome to be driving this car and to look up and that is your view. Amazing. Um, also, the rear view mirrors, generally on the original cars, they put them way up here. I have owned and driven GT40 with the mirrors up there. Uh, I, it doesn't work for me, so we had them right here. Great side profile as well. Um, in here, it does have air conditioning, which is great. It's a uh, modern feature that you have to have in this car because it gets to be about 110 degrees in this cockpit, I swear, uh, or more. Uh, to, to open the car, there's a cable here. You pull it, you push the door way open. By the way, you cannot park next to anybody uh, because you will open your door on them. Okay, here we go. Taking the steering wheel back off, and I'm gonna slide out here. So you sit up on this gas tank, 
is when they step out. Now, I think the only way to wrap up this video would be to do a startup. So here we go. I'm gonna show you. I hope, moment you've all been waiting for. Here we go, we're gonna turn the key. We're gonna make sure it's not in gear. It is not, you have a push to start, which is awesome. And here we go. Now it also wouldn't be appropriate if I didn't give you a rip. I'm gonna go deaf. So good, so good. Now obviously, the car's not that warm yet, so I'm not gonna rev it up to freaking seven, 8,000 RPMs for you, but that'll give you an idea of what that's like. GoPro does not do it justice. You cannot get the sound out of this little camera that you should, but if you've seen this car in person, again, you know this thing's just insane. So anyway, again, in the future, I'm gonna do uh, more videos with this. I wanna do a professional one, reviewing this much more in depth. I wanna do include driving and flybys and all that good stuff. I'm working on it. Uh, that'll be something that probably in springtime will make happen. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And thank you for watching.